Hello everyone. I Ashutosh Tripathi once again welcome you to my YouTube channel learn.com and today I am going to take up yet another grammar topic which is very important that is punctuation. Now the word punctuation is derived from the Latin word punctum which means a point. Now punctuation is the art of using spaces and symbols in writing. It helps to distinguish one sentence from another or one part of the sentence from another part of the sentence. Um, now whenever we speak, there is a variation in our tone. During our speech, sometimes we take a pause, sometimes we don't take a pause. Now these pauses are also of different duration. That is their duration is not same. Some of these pauses are short while others are pretty long. We are supposed to raise or lower our voice at different pauses. The marks of punctuation perform the same function as these pauses do in the speech. So coming to the topic, let's begin it. Here I go with the first slide. Punctuation. Now, see, I've written here a few words. Like he has written it. Now we can speak these words in different ways. We can speak these words in the form of a simple sentence or a statement. We can speak them in the form of a question or we can speak them as an exclamatory sentence by giving them a strong feeling or showing surprise. So all that depends is how we pronounce, how we express the sentence. See, I've shown here in the example using these four words, if you are saying the sentence as a statement, simple statement, we would say, he has written it. He has written it with a full stop, simple. But if we want to give it the effect of a question, interrogative effect, we would say, he has written it. He has written it. So this, in this way, we give it a question effect and if you want to give it a surprising effect to make it an exclamatory sen sentence we would say he has written it he has written it means with a surprise effect we have to say so from these examples it is evident it is very much clear that a wrong or absence of punctuation mark would convey a wrong meaning so it is very important in English literature while reading we have to concentrate on the pauses small pauses long pauses that is comma full stop all these are nothing but they symbolize pause a comma represents a shorter pause where a full stop represents a longer pause that all these things we are going to study so these pauses are very important now the absence or presence of a comma can change the entire meaning of a sentence. Let me explain this to you with a very funny example. Now you can see this slide. How the absence or presence of comma can change the entire meaning of a sentence. For example, see this sentence. <coughs> let's eat grandma. We are saying let's eat grandma. So what exactly the sentence means here? We are suggesting to eat the grandma itself but actually here a comma is missing the comma should be placed here after the verb eat so let's eat grandma a shorter pause here let's eat grand, uh, grandma means we are requesting grandma to come and eat let's eat a suggestion given to grandma but if you are missing the comma then it becomes a cannibalistic difference. It will exhibit a uh, cannibalism. That is the quality of eating humans. Let's eat grandma. Quite funny. The next example. I find inspiration in cooking my family and my dog. So no comma. See the absence of comma. How it is changing the meaning of the sentence. Entire meaning is changed. I find inspiration in cooking my family and my dog. Means the person here, the subject I, he or she finds inspiration in cooking the family and the dog itself. Looks very humorous. 
but actually the comma will make the sentence perfect i find inspiration in cooking my family and my dog means the subject i it finds inspiration in three things first one is cooking second one is family and the third one is dog so i think with these two examples uh, it will be very clear to you the importance of comma how important the comma or how important role does it plays in english literature let's move up to the next slide now these are the important marks of punctuation which we are supposed to cover in this video as you can see they are full stop exclamation mark interrogation mark a colon semicolon apostrophe comma double inverted commas and single inverted commas so a total of 3 and 6 nine punctuation marks we have to cover in this video <coughs> now among these nine the first three that is full stop exclamation mark and interrogation mark these three are also known as end marks they are also known as end marks because these three are also known as end marks because they mark the end of the statement means they are always used at the end of the statement a full stop is used at the end of the sentence exclamation mark is used at the end of the exclamatory sentence and this question mark is used at the end of the interrogative sentence and that is why they are also known as end marks so now let us begin with the end marks first that is full stop mark of exclamation and mark of interrogation so we'll cover these first three end marks first moving on to the next slide now the first punctuation mark that we are going to take is full stop now as you can see on the screen what exactly a full stop is so a full stop declares the end of a sentence means as soon as we uh, put a full stop it terminates the sentence it shows that the sentence is ending here and it also indicates the separation of a sentence so that the readers cannot mix up different sentences it is used at the end of a statement which is complete and not a question or a exclamatory sentence now as you know the sentences or the statement is basically of four types the assertive imperative interrogative and exclamatory so full stop is always used at the end of the assertives those which are statements they are not used at the end of a uh, exclamatory and questions they are uh, only added after assertives and imperatives assertives and imperatives see the example here alex was a little boy when he first saw a person dying he was so shocked and panicked that he could not sleep for several days he still fears the sight of someone's death so here i have taken three sentences and you can see three full stop three full stop shows that we are having a total of three statements so the use of full stop means here we have to give a little pause then start the next sentence and this full stop shows that the statement ends here after this we have to begin a new sentence as i have earlier told you it is used at the end of the statement which is complete means it shows that this sentence completes here that is why we are using full stop and this full stop also indicates the separation of sentences the full stop shows that there are three separate sentences here the first one the second one and the third one it shows the separation of sentences suppose we are not using the full stop then the reader will get mixed up with the ideas the ideas won't be clear to us what actually the writer is trying to say now how we are using this full stop in another way see here first is is used at the end of the statements and imperatives second the full stop is also used in abbreviations that is short forms like here many times we are writing eg eg which is example in english it is known as example but actually the eg stands for exemplary gratia 
it's a latin word that means for the sake of example so many times we are using this short form to write example but this eg means exemplary gratia see e here stands for exemplary g for gratia it's a latin word which means for the sake of example yet another word i have taken is saint that the word saint can be written in short form as sp then using a full stop right so these are the uh, other examples where we are, where we are using the full stop another you can see it is used in short forms like united states of america so u full stop s full stop a but here it is not compulsory now in modern ages it is not compulsory to use full stops in short forms you can write directly u s a in this way also you can write so i think it's clear now how we are using the full stops it is used at the end of the statements and imperatives it is used at the end of, uh, end of the abbreviations and it is used in the short forms so these are the three uses of full stop one of the end mark let's take up the next slide next one is the mark of interrogation now it is used to complete sentence that form a direct question now there are two types of questions direct and indirect questions so direct questions that is when we when, when we are expecting some answer we are asking the direct questions so whenever it is an interrogative type of sentence so while writing interrogative sentences we use question mark at the end whereas on the other hand the indirect questions are regarded as statements and they end with a full stop not a question mark remember in indirect questions indirect questions end with a full stop and not with a question mark question mark is always used at the end of the direct questions see the example here why are you late today this is a direct question why are you late today it's a question that's why we are using question mark are you coming with me question mark now you know that in english the questions can begin with two ways either they begin with wh type question words or they begin with auxiliary words wh type means what where when whose why which how etc all these are wh type and the other way to write a question is to use auxiliary words is am are has have etc so these are the two ways to write the question and questions always end with a question mark that is mark of interrogation i think this is the very this is very easy to understand next one is mark of exclamation mark of exclamation but this exclamatory mark indicates excitement sudden emotion or feelings it can also be used for giving additional emphasis to sentences phrases or single words and interjection means whenever uh, there are two ways of saying something one way is we think before speaking and the other way is to say something without thinking that is it is momental it comes out automatically we are, when we express our emotion or feeling sudden emotion if suddenly some emotion arises inside us and we express them in the form of words then they are termed as exclamatory sentences or there are certain other words also interjections which are regarded as exclamatory so the example what a beautiful house what a beautiful house sign of exclamation alas i have wasted all my time alas i have wasted all my time here the speaker is regretting he's showing regression that he has wasted all his time how i wish i had the wings of a dove how i wish i had the wings of a dove means Here the speaker is wishing that he had the wings of the dove, a bird. So in this way, if we are expressing excitement, emotions, feelings, then this these sentences end with a mark of exclamation, and they are termed as exclamatory sentences. 
moving on to the next slide next one is very easy which is inverted commas in double quotes inverted commas in double quotes now here double quotes or double inverted commas are used to indicate quotation in a sentence it marks the exact words of the speaker so these commas you must have noticed while solving the questions regarding direct and indirect speech so whenever we are writing a direct speech which shows the sentence within the inverted comma shows the exact words spoken by the speaker so the sentence i'm repeating again the sentence within the inverted comma shows the exact words spoken by the speaker see here in the example the old man said united we stand divided we fall united we stand divided we fall here these words the sentence within the inverted comma these are the exact words spoken by the speaker that is old man in the next example the pilot said we are ready to take off here the exact words spoken by the pilot is we are ready to take off means we are not supposed to make any changes that is why the inverted comma shows the exact words spoken by the speaker and all it is always within the double inverted commas next one is the single inverted comma they are used to indicate title of books poems stories etc and to draw attention to a word so they are used to indicate the title of books any poems stories etc and if you want to draw attention to any particular word then also we are using this single inverted commas say for example here gyaneshwari is composed by saint gyaneshwar now gyaneshwari is a holy book composed by saint gyaneshwar so that is why we are trying to highlight this word that is we are that's why we have used the single inverted comma yet another example rocky was the name of rohit's pet dog so here we want to highlight the word rocky that's why we are using or writing it within single inverted commas it is also used to indicate a quotation within a quotation when we are writing a quotation within a quotation means quotation inside quotation then also we use single inverted comma see here the first quotation is within the double inverted commas that i was locked up in this home you call a lamp for ages the genie said the genie said i was locked up in this home you call a lamp for ages so this is double inverted comma quotation marks as you can see here also it is ending with a double inverted and beginning with the double inverted but inside this quotation we are using one more quotation that is single inverted because we want to highlight this particular section that's why we are using single inverted comma so quotation inside quotation is also this is also the situation where we use single inverted commas now in this way we come to end of the part 1 of the punctuation now the rest of the punctuation marks i'm going to cover in the next part that is part 2 of this topic hope you like this video and understood the content thanks for uh, watching the video seeing you soon in the next part